When you think of moments in your life that taught you about love, kindness, compassion, and loyalty, what do you think of? If you thought about your dog, either past or present, you are not alone. The bonds formed between mankind and dog has held firm for centuries, and for mushes, it's the reason they run. You can feel it in many ways, in the way they look at you, the way their fur feels between your fingers after a long, tiring day, and the way they kiss you after a good run, thankful for the partnership and activity you share together. It's unconditional. It's genuine. It's life-changing. We set out to explore the bonds between mushes and their teams because dog sledding is more than just a sport. It's a bond that lasts a lifetime. About 10 years ago, my father's job relocated him from our home in Mount Morris, Michigan to the small yet bustling city of McAllen, Texas. It was around that time that our dedication to the sport of dog sledding had to come to a close, beginning the next chapters of our lives. You can change your home, you can change your address, but you can't erase the memories after you leave. And I'm excited to dive into them again. For those that don't know, I want to start at the beginning. How did you get involved with the sport? Well, it sort of happened opposite, meaning I got involved in the dogs first. Long story short, got into an Alaskan Malamute, started researching more about the breed and what they were used for, which led me to sledding. We were actually looking at a particular dog, and behold, there was this Malamute in the kennel that popped his head up through the kennel and he just kept looking at my husband and my husband was looking and said is that dog available is that dog available and I kept trying to get his attention and said hey you know we're supposed to be looking at this dog but we ended up getting the dog that stuck his head up and his name was Yukon. He stole our hearts he was my husband's baby and an amazing, amazing lead dog. Very, very smart. And he basically taught our whole team. So I guess it started with Yukon. Him and Bob. Him and his daddy started the sport. And I miss him. I miss him to this day. When we started, we were not searching to go out and win races, um, do the UP 200, aspire to do the Iditarod in Alaska. We were looking at being able to participate and articulate the sport that has long since been gone from the public eye and be able to take that into public environments and share it with people. I can't remember a time that we didn't have a Malamute in the house. <laughs> we started with Yukon, and he was my dad's best leader he's ever had, in my honest opinion. And it wasn't long before we had a whole pack of them. They really are the most beautiful dogs that you will ever see. And that's probably because of where they come from. The Alaskan Malamute is one of the oldest known sled dogs utilized by the Malamut tribe in the region now known as Alaska. Originally used for hunting seals, warding off polar bears, and pulling heavy loads, the Alaskan Malamute is one of the most popular sledge dog breeds in the sport today, known for their strength and endurance. Harnessing a strong temperament, the Alaskan Malamute has a very independent mind of its own. 
What was it about the breed that attracted your attention? We were looking for um, a pet, a family, uh, a friend that we also wanted to use in the sport of dog sledding. And the Alaskan Malamutes fit that to a T. They're more the Clydesdale of the horses. They're the bigger drafting dogs. A pack oriented, very beautiful, working type breed dog. It encompassed everything that a man would want in a dog. So while you were running with a team of Alaskan Malamutes, my sister Amanda was running with a team of Alaskan Huskies. The Alaskan Husky, with origins in Alaska, was crossbred for workability and is a mix of many different dogs in the Spitz lineage line, including the Siberian Husky, German Shepherd, Border Collie, and several others. Unlike their Siberian Husky and Malmute cousins, the Alaskan Husky has a much calmer demeanor. I wanted to go fast and I wanted to win, or at least try to win. And on top of that, I was smaller. I was eight years old, little girl when I started and the Malamutes just overpowered me. I needed something that I could power versus powering me. When it's just you on the back of a sled and you're out by yourself, you need to be able to control the animals and control your team if anything were to happen, heaven forbid. As far as the placement in the race, there was no competition. One thing we had in common that we maybe did compete in was how well our dogs performed. I always wanted to be as good as my dad. I looked up to him as far as the training side of dog sledding and what it took. We always, both of us, always wanted to go out and put the best showing on to get the most potential out of the dogs as possible. How we finished, for me, I never wanted to come in last. I always had, on paper, probably the slowest dogs, but I can only remember one race where I got the Red Lantern. And there's a lot of other times we should have came in last, but we didn't. And it's because those dogs took every command, didn't get a tangle, didn't have to stop and fix a line. It was a family thing, so no competition. Tell me about some of the experiences you had that impacted you personally. Thinking about it now, if you had asked me maybe 10 years ago, there'd be different ones. But if I think about it now, I really reflect a lot on when I started in the sport. Here they come. There's my baby. And having two dogs and going to our first rig session. These are training sessions you do prior to winter to learn, condition, and associate your dogs with other dogs in preparation for the snow and the racing. So I think a lot about how I started and how simple and how actually minuscule it was compared to how we ended. I think it's the little things. I mean, I have memories that maybe aren't such favorites, but they stick out. I had a team of four or five dogs, I think, and we were just training, I wasn't racing. I had to stop for one of my crazy little dogs and fix his, his gang line. Um, I got, well, he got like stepped over it maybe, I think. And so I had to fix that. And when I did that, all the dogs were very eager to keep going. It was still the beginning of the run. And when they, were lunging at their harnesses. Meanwhile, I'm in the middle of the team. My sled was in the back. The snow had popped and my team took off and I was drugged for yards and yards and yards trying to make my way back to the sled. I, I did, I'm not sure how. Uh, we ended with a, obviously a lot more dogs, a lot of equipment, um, a lot of commitments that we had made to to clubs and organizations that we not only went and raced in, but we sat on boards and we helped facilitate these clubs running. Just the relationships that you form uh, with the dogs, I think are some of my favorite memories. Taking the dog each time to the campfire at night with all the other mushers and just having them sit on your lap and, um, you know, having the dogs one by one, even during the middle of the weekday when you're not out working or sledding or anything like that, but one came in and slept every night, they knew their rotation. So those are definitely memories that I will never forget. One of the biggest things I still remember is the Motown Winter Blast in Detroit. This was a winter festival leading up to their Super Bowl. And we, along with some other family members and friends we brought, we brought 96 dogs 
to camp on the streets of Detroit prior to the Super Bowl. And we picketed our dogs for the general public to come in and pet. Many people touched and handled and kissed and loved and on our dogs and our dogs handled it well. And I believe that's by training and, and raising them the way that we did. I can remember so many people just being amazed at how loving and caring and friendly these dogs were. So this was really huge of us to take something we loved and enjoyed and we brought it out to the general public and shared some of that joy um, with a lot of folks. You were a musher for years and it takes a lot of patience, perseverance, and strength to continuously run and train a large team of dogs. I think people not even in the sport would understand and agree with that. But it also takes a lot of love. Would you agree? Yeah, you have to love it. relationship with every dog that I had um, I think definitely made me as successful as I was when I did it. Got some Alaskans, got one, and now I'm up to six getting the next one, another one next weekend. It's definitely not like a snowmobile that you can put away like in the summertime. It's 24-7 and I've been doing it for you know six years and I'm still out training dogs. The dogs still aren't fully trained. It takes a long time. You'll see teams that go out there and just run and don't train and they, all, they do poorly. They don't do as well. So if you go out there with a trained team, you're definitely, it's, it's, it works. It's a lot better. And just going out there, like me being in Seven Dog, going out against all the older people with more experience and everything. And I'm out there kicking their butt, so it's a lot of fun. I'm out there having a blast. It's like, yeah, you know, it's fun. There's days where you can see maybe that dog. kind of sad you don't have them anymore and it's like losing a family member that you only got to share for 10 years you didn't get 60 you know 70 years with them you got 10. that's what resonates with me is you still miss them we'll never have another malamute never and the reason for that is because i don't think that we could ever that we can never replicate those dogs were one of a kind our dog team that we had in our eyes i should say was one of a kind we loved them. They were they were our family, and you can't replace them. I do have uh, a little jar here that contains one of our last Malamutes that passed of old age. Um, it has some of her hair in here. So before we took her, um, she had developed some seizures, and we had to take her into the vet and due to her age and her condition, they recommended that we had her put down. So prior to taking her to the vet, I did a one last combing on her and I was able to get some of her hair. 
So it's been in this jar, no, well, since she's been with us alive. And it's got a little picture of her when she was a little baby on the front. And this is just one of the little heart kept keepsakes that we have and with the different pictures that we have of the dog teams in our other bedroom. In this picture book, we have photos of the entire team and also a special passage here. I know that it must be different now that I am no longer there. I realize how much I was loved and how much you all did care. I know it will be hard at first when you look around for me, expecting to find me in my bed or beside my favorite tree. Someday you will begin to see, although it will take some time, the happy times you shared with me, the memories are yours and mine. I'll remember you, my friends, and how much you meant to me, so please don't grieve and don't be sad. It was just my time to leave. I'm grateful for not only the animals, but I'm grateful for the sport. I'm grateful for the people in that sport. Those people took me, my whole family under their wings. They taught us things. I was young. Uh, they definitely mentored me. I had a lot of great mentors in the sport. You get out of it what you put into it. And we put our heart and soul into what we do. We don't do anything half. We go all in and we have a lot of good rewards from it. I think those dogs taught me a lot. They helped me through a period um, in my growing up to an adult. All the love I gave them, they surely returned it, and then some. And I have nothing but fond memories of them, and I, I hope I can someday see them again to get the youngsters involved. It's, uh, it teaches the kids responsibility to have a dog, to care for a dog. It teaches the kids companionship and compassion. And it, it, animals do a lot for human beings. We can learn a lot from animals. Thank you for letting me teach you and raise you. And just thank you for being a part of my life and a part of my heart. And thank you for touching it in ways that I didn't know a decade later that I would still think about, still cry about. So, thank you. The dogs made it worth every minute and I enjoyed, I enjoyed it very, very much. Mushing is truly a magical sport. Not a day goes by that I don't think about those dogs that changed me and my family's life. What's doggies? <laughs> Two different people. This is uh, Mount Morris, and it's one of the dog training sessions. I see you. I see you. I hope that you had a good life and that I was able to provide that. I guess you always look inside any dog or any animal you care about once you knew what they were thinking, because they can't tell us. Our dog team that we had was one of a kind, and we'll never have another one. my ticket, book my place, buckle up, let's go. I know that this is the right train. It's the right train. Pets cannot stay with us for a lifetime. As much as we hope and pray and wish they could, they leave us. But for mushes, they don't actually leave. They stick with us. They leave tracks, like little heart prints in the snow. And I've been burning up the track like fire, fire seen me through. Pick the right train, I could be 